Welcome. Shalom. Salam. Namaste. Ni hao. Konnichiwa. Hola. Bonjour. We had uh, earlier, a few months ago, a premiere. And now uh, we're going to do a live stream. So the thing about this, um, it's a recent update that I wanted to share with uh, my fellow Pathway community members. Okay. So let me carry on. So we have made uh, some really great progress lately. And we have uh, made the water way more realistically now, which I'm very proud of. To put the effort on this water. The graphics is, are, are more amazing than ever before. Photorealism. That's what we're aiming in Pathway. And mind you, I'm the only developer, programmer, and designer at this moment, so it takes me a lot of time to calculate and triangulate all these necessary features. To me, I'm not a perfectionist when it comes to my own creation. I'm a perfectionist professionally, but I enjoy... If a little things are out of place, that's perfectly fine. I learned to accept that. It's something that I find very challenging. However, you know, it's something that I find interesting as well because I see a lot of people who have amazing talent and they too tell me, you know, you just cannot aim to be perfect all the time because if you do that, you're going to burn yourself down and you're going to diminish your your value that you want to set for your 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 creation and your also your community so today i have a uh, most most updated our uh, district for polytheism buddhism alexander's grand uh, monastery so this is so uh, this this location goes way back, back in the times of the beginning, when uh, what I called earlier to my uh, colleagues, uh, Pangea. So every pathway region back in the day was all in one land. And just imagine that. Try to think about how Pangea was. You had Mesopotamia before then combined with, you know, let's say they say that uh, like, Brazil was connected to Africa back in Pangaea. So think about all these regions that were, you know, connected in some way with the other regions in the in the physical first life. So the thing is, in Pathway Universe, everything now is specialized in its own niche uh, perspective, and we want to capsulize and capitalize. On the potential to bring in a unique scenery for all viewers we don't want to just you know just throw and wing you know putting certain content you know to show our fans and uh, we just want to bring everything into realization and perspective the quality content that we want to provide so this is our Alexander's Grand Buddhist Monastery. And, uh, you know, the thing is, we have, uh, since we have updated the graphics, we, uh, we, we don't mind if certain things are still a little bit, uh, you know, not 100%, but, you know, pretty much... Uh, we're fine with that uh, because the thing is we need to have uh, donations to actually 
expand upon the hardware. So the thing is, this is actually a, a low setting to medium. So the thing is, it probably is most likely it could be better, but we don't want to run the risk on our hardware. So I'll show you a little bit around the around the area. In our last video that we showed you, which was probably a couple of years ago, that video was a demonstration on you know, combining back and then a Buddhist and a, a Buddhist monastery and a shrine, a shrink, a sink, a shrine. So the, the emphasis of this idea was to uh, combine the cultures because uh, it was, it was, I was trying to experiment to see what is most likely going to be suitable for people if they never have went on first a virtual world that's usually what you know simulations are necessarily but we consider pathway a universe a virtual universe because we are a lot more than that we emphasize on going to different virtual worlds and uh, creating a humanitarian project to raise issues on awareness of people with, uh, with adults with uh, special needs. This could be any kind of need. This could be autism, this could be physical, uh, mental intelligence, or professional needs that needs to be met. So the thing is, Pathway Universe uh, started many years ago, and it was always a private project just in the community and expanded upon, you know, various softwares and various technologies of the times. And the most recent event uh, was, uh, as I mentioned in many of my online profiles, that I have, um, you know, contacted the local state, um, let's see, local, state, and federal government to help a, an, an autistic man gain his civil rights, his ADA uh, uh, compliance, and he was granted independence. Now, I'm not going to go right into perfect detail because it's confidential, but I want to do this kind of support for my fellow Pathway members that uh, either have, you know, a loved one, a family relative that has a disability that is an adult, or is a friend or a colleague or a co-worker or somebody or, or an educator, professor, instructor at the college level, community college level, vocational level that actually needs to find their place for their, um, their you know, respect, uh, respected uh, individual with a learning dis disability. And Pathway truly wants to help and actually be a voice for adults with disabilities, regardless of what type of disability, because this is a protected status. So we want to be, you know, disabled lives matter. Everyone that has a disability that's an adult that wants to be helped, that wants to, you know, go above and beyond the, 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 the call of the norm, that's what Pathway wants to do. And the thing is, I know personally, as the founder, it's not going to happen overnight, right away, because I've seen very many successful organizations that have gone in different directions. They have tried to, you know, try to do, um, try to do it all at once, and then it comes crashing down. So we got to gradually branch out, and we got to gradually grow. Now, the great success story is. Uh, I have maintained international dim diplomatic relationships with the country of France through a virtual world uh, called Virtual Dream Grid. So this virtual dream is a French grid. It's a French virtual world that uh, uh, the founder, um, I'll keep his name confidential, he's an amazing man. He, uh, he helps me with uh, understanding of the technology he gives me some resources and you know the benefit the kudos for him and uh, hopefully he, we keep maintaining this international di diplomatic relationship at 
on on the you know first life basis uh sure i have uh talked to local congressmen and local politicians and i have raised the issue over the years many of times even had the opportunity to meet our vice president uh that was former um governor of his state so i have met many successful people and i have surrounded myself with many successful people so it's nothing new to me it's just that conveying the message that pathway is there to actually help instead of just providing entertainment it's something that i'm trying to like work around because the thing is many people don't understand that pathway is a real breathing machine it actually is is a simulation that you could go online and then install on your computer whether it's pc windows or if it's mac you know uh, os x which could be el capitan or it could be linux it could be ubuntu it could be linux mint it could be debian it could be the other distros i mean not too many people not too many organizations not like organizations uh not too many you know computer technologies usually run on three operating systems and so fluently that we do in pathway universe and it's something that i'm very amazed now um we ha we had a, a very great uh, privilege recently which i probably have mentioned before in the past but in social media is that we have met uh, pathway universe has met uh, philip rosendale which is the founder of second life so i actually uh, was in a conference and uh, the host was dragster he is um a like a radio personality host but uh we actually went to his uh, chat and heard what he what he was talking about i think uh, an author named larry N nielsen or something and uh he was an amazing author uh explaining about his uh his ethos about uh, literacy and and his story and his background and his life uh events that uh shaped his um character and and we found that interesting as well however it's been about over a decade that alexander our founder has uh tried to aim for meeting philip rosendale because he is uh such a high profile character uh, person that it was very exciting to uh come across and uh i'm very well not me necessarily uh path of universe our whole whole organization simulation is uh is very pleased and uh it's a lot of honor to have met philip rosendale which in in world his name was philip linden he was the ceo executive um owner of linden labs and and second life so the thing is uh we're really excited to have had that opportunity and he was literally only sitting i don't know like this is an estimate three to five um they call it seat cushions or little pillows from him and he had a rose in his hand he always he does these things like he's very um he has a playful character but he's very serious this is the funny thing uh if you ever if you ever heard of second life or if you ever heard of philip rosendale he's uh he's a interesting guy like he at first you know he starts out sharing his stories um he talks about other creations that he has done in the past and um and but the thing is i'm not going to go into the politics of what uh he has that what he faces in the future of technology but the thing is i'm going to talk about the mutual regard of how he's such an amazing person and I, he's such a great mentor so because we had ha held in the past uh second life embassy so a path embassy of pathway in second life so i respect him right at this moment not to say anything 
uh, on contrary. So the exciting thing is uh, he discussed uh, how he's able to uh, shape and transform technology and the usage. However, um, he did he he kind of at, at the, in the beginning like any kind of known person or celebrity, they don't acknowledge at first that you know one of their fans is uh, you know asking a question. So this is something I personally had happen and it's, it happens to all of us even even if we're in the close circles and the close groups and the close connections um it took him a while till he finally says wow i like alexander's uh outfit because i was wearing one of his uh first creations there was a virtual world back back in the day called linden world this was predate second life and uh there's a, a wonderful uh, successful uh, individual, which I want to keep her name confidential as well. But uh, she's really well known in the Second Life community. I don't know if she's known in the Open Sim community, but uh, I give her a lot of praise. And I actually thanked her on Twitter. So if you want to see my Pathway Universe Twitter account uh, profile, you could definitely look at there and you'll see why I uh, I gave a thanks and a shout out to but going back to the original story is that this individual um, this female individual gave me an uh, a Linden world avatar which is over almost like two decades old but uh, it's an amazing uh, amazing creation that uh, Philip Rosendale created so it looks like a uh, space man outfit which I show in my pictures on social media definitely and um it's such it's such it's a little bit outdated I know but I I find it so so humorful because uh it, it takes me back to a time before my time <laughs> because the thing is uh I was doing so many different you know virtual worlds and video games back in the day that uh you know, the technology and the times have totally changed, but it was such an honor to uh, have this Linden World, uh, I call it Spaceman outfit. And uh, it, I knew it was going to uh, make Philip Rosendale notice my presence. And I knew, I perfectly calculated that he's going to say something good about me because I was uh, showing respect about his, his creation with this Linden World avatar or character. So he um, he said, wow, Alexander, he's wearing one of those uh, Linden World uh, uh, avatars. And then another, well, the first person actually was a person in the audience say, wow, that's one of Second Life's uh, first uh, original avatars. So the thing is, a lot of people uh, kind of get this idea that Second Life and Linden World were actually the same virtual world. And that's on the contrary. Because Linden World was its own virtual world, uh, completely independent to Second Life. But the thing is, uh, Linden World evolved to become Second Life. So it's it's something like the project and Pathway Universe. It's such a great correlation because uh, the project, like mentioned many times in my website, you know, uh, Pathway One Theory dot Wixite and uh, dot website dot com forward slash network so this website of ours uh, shows how to register and to create an account on pathway universe and uh, right now currently we have a video in, in espanol so the thing is you could look at that video and then contact our administrators alexander one theory on social media networking on uh, most of the popular uh, ver uh, social networks right now at the time. So um, the thing is going back to um, this conversation about Second Life is that uh, it's just, it's an amazing thing because uh, obviously he always gets a lot of people that in his close circles that find him such amazing person. So. He knows what kind of calculated responses to give to fans or colleagues and stuff. So 
it's such it's such an amazing thing that you know I actually agreed with him in a conversation. He realized it, and then I uh, agreed with the host of the event, and he realized it. And um, you know, I said at the end, and this I did take a photograph of it, and it said something like I said, you know, I only had two goals. One was to have land. This was something of it was unattainable in second life because everything costs so much money and uh, it's like almost taking a mortgage just to have real estate in second life but I was able to find a great resource in the past and uh, just to play around with you know being a landowner and actually having an embassy on second life like I had embassies in different virtual worlds even you know, INVU, I we had it. We have an embassy, but the thing is, it's uh, it's more like how they set it up. It's private, so it's like uh, I have to invite people over there, and I actually have to friend individual individuals to them to visit my uh, location. Unless you know, I have fans that will donate, and then I'll be able to buy a membership, and then have Pathway always online on I am view, but that's an different story. This is more about actually the 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 polytheism Buddhist Alexander's Grand Monastery video, but it's a lot of running uh, inquiries at the moment. So let's show more about uh the Buddhist Sangha, okay? So these are interactive uh, elephants, and actually, maybe a little later, I'll show you how I could um, ride on an elephant, like on the top of the elephant. It's kind of an amazing thing, because Pathway has a lot of interactive features, and that's something that's pretty unique. And also Pathway is connected through the internet, so what's unique about that is that it could connect in real time. And everything is like pretty much living and breathing. Even the tree moves, the waters move, the elements move. Let's take a moment again to look at this pretty water again. The gorgeous water. Let's see. And then let's put it a sunset or something. Sometimes it will change to back to the default, which is not good, but I'm still working on that. Okay, slightly there. So this is what it looks like with the sunset. Okay, let's bring it back to its uh, original state. Okay. And the thing is, I could always play around with the environment and make it look, you know, photorealism. But uh, I, I do treasure my equipment, so I want to protect my assets. But if you have, like, a beast computer or something, and you, you, you have, like, you know, very high press processors and a lot of RAM and... A lot of things and you want to be a member then you'll really benefit on seeing all the gorgeous perks of pathway because it's it's wonderful when it's you know in high definition and it's wonderful um and everything and it, the thing is my server has a lot better graphical and uh and processing power just you know my current individual computer needs to be updated someday but these little leaves uh it's amazing they they fall off the tree really real realistically. And you can see, you know, it's pretty cool. In the future, I may make another video of this um, that is offline. So right now, we actually are live streaming. So in my offline version, I may incorporate some music soundtracks, uh, which I haven't done in a while because, uh, you know, I've been so busy with stuff. But this issue here... I just realized in my physics engine, I have it under some other physics engine, which is perfectly fine. I have to resolve that, but that's fine. So this is the monastery. It's um the influences of this is like uh, Thailand, you know.
But thing, the thing is, there's really multicultural perspective on this because I incorporate a little bit of uh, Japanese and Chinese and various different Asian references with my designs because I really want to have every element of Buddhism incorporate as much as possible, which is a little bit different because like, in the you know, especially in the United States, there's, or, or, or other places in the world, there's unique customs to certain, you know, culture references. And the thing is, I want it to be like a melting pot of Pathway Universe. I want everything that is one reference to be that reference in all different spiritual centers of ours. So, and also I want to make this, you know, separate. Like, I don't want to combine different cultural centers because then it gets confusing which one we're talking about. And when you actually visit Pathway and you go to these um, destinations, you're going to see that it says... A particular district and, and it correlates to the particular genre of the district so the thing is right now we're in a, a polytheism buddhism alexander's grand palace no not palace monastery so the thing is i can't see because i have this search engine here i search a bar menu which i could disable that but it's perfectly fine so the thing is, uh, going back uh, to our conversation about currency systems, we do have a currency system called Globits, and this is um, like universal, but it's it's like uh, like I I dislike to use the word fake, but it's it's not real currency. It's like play money, so you you could purchase this, but I'm not endorsing this at the moment. But uh, it is potentially possible to purchase these Globits, but it's not necessary in Pathway Universe because I want to let my fans know that Pathway Universe pretty much operates for free. Um, the, the only exception is if you want to build land or connect, uh, you know, regions to Pathway. But, like, these are not just, like, regions where, let's say, you know, you have to do yourself. We will customize it for you. And uh, you don't have to worry about, well, what happens if my computer shuts down? Will I lose everything? You don't have to worry about that. I've been to places where, you know, you try to set up your region and you have it to be customized. And all of a sudden, if you buy X and shut your computer, poop, it's gone. Poof, it's gone. And I don't like that idea. I think it's not, you know, benefiting the, the client, not benefiting the fan. And not benefiting the pathway experience, because I always am very careful to always back up my uh, my work. So I would most likely back up your work as well. So the thing is, we have updated this probably most recently from the video. This is an altar. I try to make it more photorealistic than actually um, combining everything the same. But this is uh, the altar, a wooden altar. I. I I find this very uh, interesting. Um, I, one day I may put, uh, you know, a Buddhist uh, scripture here and actually have online interaction, which is really po potentially possible because I have done it in my other uh, cultural centers, spiritual centers. So here is, uh, there's two monks. This is uh, a monk here um, and... He, he has to actually be a little bit more to the ground, which is perfectly fine. Okay. So then this is another monk. He just rotates. But he can interact, but it's like uh, they're like a robot. So the thing is, um, one day I'll have it more realistic. In some areas, I actually do have it more realistic. But, um, you know, it's just a time crunch. So if I sit here, he uh, kneels. And he, I'll, he uh, continues the ceremony. So, yeah, this is pretty cool. And I may have to uh, space out a little bit of how he interacts with the world and environment and how individuals uh, sit down in these mats. So nothing collides. But for now, I think it's okay. Okay, let's go inside this little um, temple. So anytime you have any kind of, you know, situation that you can't go through a wall, 
because this is um, they call it phantom the situation uh, the physics you have to like click on somewhere if you have it so I want to help, help you out here if it's not configured you go to preferences and then uh, let's see preferences oh you go to teleportation let's see I think it's move and view and then teleports no, no, no. movement and then you want to see the single click on land you always want to click the first one to be moved to click point and then the second one uh, teleport to click point and then say OK and then you click on OK since we already have it configured we don't click on OK we don't click on OK because I mean it's counterproductive so I'm going to show you around this uh, environment So, I mean, if I had to say what season this is, some may say it's fall, some may say it's spring. I think it's a little bit of spring because uh, there's, no, there's no snow on the ground and uh, it seems to be warming up. That's my opinion. And I think it's a fact too because uh, if it was fall, it would be more different colors of the trees and the environment would be impacted. There is also special sounds in this environment, like uh, birds chirping, the ocean, or various other channels uh, of interactive medium. However, um, there's a situation where if I uh, enable all the sounds at one time, because I set it up by default that they should uh, work all simultaneously, the situation is, uh, I have a radio system, but uh, I don't want to uh, play it on YouTube or or other social media at this time until I get the, the permission to. So it's pretty much uh, fully customizable. It could be anything, and uh, it's pretty it's pretty relaxing because there's some really great uh, chimes and uh, chants and some music that goes along with these uh, locations. Now in my previous videos those were all um, actually sponsored by uh, YouTube. Uh, it was called YouTube Audio Library which is an amazing, this is an unpaid endorsement because they benefit uh, the YouTube community providing uh, public domain content so it's a shout out to uh, the YouTube and Google Incorporated for allowing their creators to become uh, artists, artists, or artisans. I like that word, artisans. And uh, it's very beneficial because you know, pretty much all the t all our time is usually, you know, um, reduced in the in the day because of work or because of, uh, you know, we got situations that come up. So to for, for people to, like, let's say, create their own music on the fly and to create, um, create uh, you know, what I do is, like, I'm a content digi digital content creator. So it's sometimes hard to be a musician, a creator, a developer, a programmer, and all in one. So it's nice that you could take compromises and you could work on many different types of uh, 
you know, events that, you know, you have somebody that says, hey, I got you some cool music. You want to try it out in your video? And I said, wow, that's cool. I'll try that out. You know, it's kind of unique. And if my uh, fellow colleagues out there, you know, find that uh, YouTube audio library works, uh, you know, always let me know because uh, that's great stuff, uh, great quality content. Yeah, you know, they could be, you know, a few seconds long, some of these little sound bits, or it could be a couple minutes long. It doesn't matter. I mean, sometimes I really loop uh, various music together, and it could be, you know, a continued sequence, but uh, it's like I want to, um, you know, express a certain kind of uh, limelight, like a emotion in the video. So if uh, there's an exciting part of uh, the video or a sad part of the video or a happy part of the video, there's elements of the human emotions because the thing is, for me to provide quality content, I want to relate as much to my viewer as possible. I want to ensure that they have the same kind of, you know, first perspective that I would have if I was seeing Pathway Universe, either for the first time or a reoccurring time. So I want all my viewers to be appreciated and to feel that uh, what they see is what they get. And there's no uh, filter blurs or bubbles. So why we're spending a little extra time here at this corner with uh, this light uh, shadow beam. Actually, I've seen this many, many times when I'm on the sailboat or something in Pathway. But it's pretty cool because I have set uh, this certain kind of sky feature. As you see it with my cursor. I don't know if the video shows with the cursor, but... Um, this is like uh, a realistic shadow of light beam into this, uh, you know, degraded, uh, like collapsed uh, building in ruin. But I think it's pretty realistic, pretty cool to have something like this little feature. Now, if I take away this thing with, you know, shaders, this stuff disappears, unfortunately. Uh, so I show you with this with the feature on. So that's a cool thing. And there's many various other features in Pathway that uh, it's amazing when you put it really like on high uh, graphics, but it slows down your RAM and it kind of overheats your computer. So, I mean, not just my software, I mean, every software, even Second Life. And any anytime you run a program to, uh, to run over the allowed limits, because there's no really standard of how long you could you could run a software. So, for instance, if I, um, you know, put it on max graphics and the max processor, and then all of a sudden, you know, like, um, I notice my computer overheating, okay? So, I, I, have a, I have a cooling pad, you know. It's an investment that is necessary to uh, protect your, your computer's uh, health, okay? I have been in virtual worlds where some of them, just don't run well. And what happened was, and this is a personal story that I don't mind sharing with my fans, my number one priority of Pathway is um, it, with my members, together are my fans. So the thing is, uh, I actually, I'm not going to call out this one virtual world, but uh, I was uh, on there and uh, I want to see how, how, how things were, you know, what's so big about this particular virtual world. And uh, I sign up with them, and uh, what ha let a let let behold um, my whole computer. This was uh, where it just render useless at one time. Um, I didn't get upset. I didn't say, "Hey, you know, I need you to buy me another computer because you messed up my uh, my computer." And I actually had to go to the store. This is this this is the situation. This is why, you know, I, I respect highly my colleagues who push me all the time, you know, at times to, hey, let's go to this one virtual world all the time. But I had this situation where I couldn't even render my computer useful anymore. So I went to the, the store and I waited in person. This is in real life. Eight long hours in line, talking to people, talking to customers 
talking to everybody pretty much. And it pretty much almost destroyed my perspective on even try to continue pursuing other virtual worlds because it's like, okay, hey, why, why you run a certain kind of technology that could cause so much harm? So the thing is in Pathway Universe, it's extremely 99%, 0.9% unlikely to cause any kind of you know, system issues, unless this is the thing. If you have less than four gigs of RAM, you have to look up your computer's uh, capability. And if it's anything, anything older than uh, Windows 7, uh, I don't know about that. Let me see, Macintosh, it would have to be something older than, I think, uh, Mac OS X uh, 10.0. And it possibly can't even run by that standard because that's really outdated. And then Linux, it could be something before Ubuntu, something before Debian, something before anything. But it's unlikely. I mean, the only noticeable, honest, honest facts is it can overheat because, you know, I do run Pathway sometimes at most 20 hours a day. But that's, that's in the past because I'm busy with my other priorities. So the thing is, um, the most it could do is just overheat the computer, make a little sound you know, that's overheating, especially on the Windows. Uh, if you're on the Macintosh, a little bit like that. If you're on the Linux, actually not so much, but the problem that I noticed with the Linux is sometimes the viewers, because a lot of times in the Linux uh, operating system, they're in uh, alpha state or beta state. So what that means is it's a pre-release uh, version that goes before the public release, which I understand, you know, that's just how it is because those projects are privately funded, and the thing is, it's uh, it's open source. So you know, whenever a developer wants to patch or fix up the or upgrade their software for that operating system, that's really upon them. But Pathway has been used uh, accessible on Linux before, and it still is. Um, but the thing is, it's not, you know, 100 percent like used every day. It's relatively used uh, once in a while. So that's something to to uh, share. So um, we will go to this little other monastery. These, there are some tigers. Now you could ride on their uh, the, their back over here. But, um, you know, I, I'll, I don't want to do it this video. I'll, I'll show the elephants later. So again, like to close that other conversation up, uh, is that um, Pathway actually is a unique uh, virtual universe because like we mentioned before, you can go to one virtual world to the another virtual world and, uh, you know, talk to other people and, uh, you know, the whole emphasis of this purpose was to uh, originally to have professors connect with us and students and to learn about technology and then to support the cause of helping adults with disabilities. So the thing is, um, our approach has not changed or evolved with that, but there has been more interest on, uh, you know, other like entertainment uh, opportunities. However, Pathway wants to stay close to its original core. And that's the belief of uh, helping people in humanity by, you know, bringing resources and actually communicating with local agencies, governments or non-government organization, NGOs, and to actually express uh, the need to help individuals with adults with disabilities because I, from my own personal, you know, experience and seeing people struggle the most, it's the ones that uh, have a learning disability or a physical disability. And I have gone to Second Life and tried to raise these issues. And actually, I did something out of the topic. I actually gave civil rights to furries. And what a furry is, is a, a creature that is like, um, like, like a Mickey Mouse, no copyright intended or anything, but that's a, like a little character that is um, of a mouse. Or, you know, there's so many other like uh, 
the Flintstones has Dino. I always mention this to my uh, fans that ask me a question on, you know, very social social media sites. They say, "What is a furry? What it does this mean?" And it means it's um, it's a um, it's part of the animal kingdom, and it's uh, a character that uh, coincides with uh, physical traits. And these physical traits could be anywhere from, um, you know, like a playful character or um, a serious character. It's like a role play. So if you hear about, uh, you know, like different kind of role playing situ situations or scenarios, it's like, uh, you know, well, in the ancient times uh, it, of uh, the United States, it was chiefs and Indians, you know, that a lot of people would uh, role play in the in the first first life. So the thing is, furry is like a much more modern approach to role play, and this role play is like um, you 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 dress up like like um, like an animal character, but you have a lot of human features to it. So. You have like you know everything that is human, like a head, shoulders, a torso, um, a body form, but you you pair it to be like um, like a um, an animal, but a human form, kind of like uh, in the Egyptian culture back in the day of a sphinx. It was um, like um, a certain kind of uh, mystical creature of a head and then a whole body of a human but it's different it's the whole body of a a, 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 cre cre a creature or a creation so uh pathway actually has its own furry it's actually own um, mascot it's the owl so the basis of this was um to create uh, a symbol that uh coincides with um you know a diverse community that we want to show that anybody could become an owl it could be anybody in our simulation because the owl is it's like a night owl we're always up in the night to work on everything to make sure it's good for our customers and our clients and our fans and uh, it could be a daytime owl by uh, just you know socializing and sharing with uh, friends and uh, colleagues and close ones and uh you know just just it's a cool thing now we used to have a uh, a while ago and uh, we used to have a like a bear and a bear is uh it was it doesn't necessarily predate that well because i always was there but uh, the bear was just a uh, testing to see uh how individuals on social media would react if they saw for the first time a furry on pathway universe because a lot of times i always hear in other virtual worlds or even video games and because virtual the video game is not the same conversation but uh the virtual world a lot of people say hey why why is there not so much opportunity for furries and then going back to the civil rights thing with second life to to reiterate and to summarize so in Second Life, I asked, a, and I'll, I mentioned the name because uh, this is important. Her name was April Linden. She is one of the head of operations at Second Life Linden Labs. And I mentioned to her, I say, just in an instant message uh, on their system, communication platform. I said, April, there should be more, uh, more talks about the furry community. And uh, let it behold, two or three days after I said that conversation, uh, I signed into my uh, my connecting device to log into their uh, virtual world, and uh, the the connecting device said, it says, you know, uh, Linden Lab is going to have a speech on the furry community. And I mean, I didn't see this in any kind of newsletters. I didn't see this any kind of calendars. I mean, it must be likely that I influenced something and I made it viral enough to actually bring upon, you know, a certain kind of, a certain kind of promotion, you know, of an idea that actually 
went into uh, corporate management, executive management at Linda Labs, which is a super rare, you know, opportunity. So I do have a powerful impact on people. So I'm glad I do, and I'm glad I could help out. And the thing is, pathway everybody is, you know, equality, diversity, and acceptance. So uh, if you've seen all our videos, we commend you. We give you a thumbs up, and and other countries, uh, peace sign. In other countries, I don't know, uh, positive, possible, pos, uh, appraisal with uh, clapping, a hand, uh, hand of applause. And the thing is, um, so that's something that, you know, Pathway does help on various other kind of, uh, on uh, different kind of, you know, helping in different causes. But our main cause is adults with disabilities. And uh we we like to help network with individuals, you know, talking to, you know, different uh, community uh, influences and networks and to bring about a change for helping people. Because, like, if I ask for help on various platforms, I probably won't get a response right away or I probably won't uh, get assisted right away. Pathway is a lot different. We want to bring direct democracy in our virtual universe by actually saying, you know, raising the issue, voting on it, and actually getting it done. So that is something that is amazing. Because um, on another note, I help uh, an individual uh, at an educational virtual summit before, and uh, she uh, expressed to me that uh, she hasn't uh, worked since 1981. And this is another popular tale I mentioned even in my uh, developer community base. It's that um, she said she was like, I think, a stay-at-home mother for the past, mm, let's see, 39 years possibly. And, um, you know... She uh, she just said, you know, I need help. Can you help me? Can someone help me? So I said, you know what? What do you need? She says, I just don't know how to interact and communicate in today's, you know, t technology and things. And I said, okay, I'll help you, miss. What do you want me to help you with? She says, well, I'm not sure just how to start. So I gave her a sense of directions. And this was free. This was not, you know, someone paying me to help this individual, especially not on the case basis that I originally intend Pathway to be. So I helped this individual and uh, they network with their graduate uh, university and they said that they're going to look for uh, opportunities, you know, leads for jobs for that individual wants to stay at home, which is challenging during COVID-19. So she's trying to also you know, have a business for her, for survival. And uh, I gave her the best of uh, hope for that opportunity. You know, and a lot of times, uh, you know, I do these things, just just not the thought about, do I want to have recognition or do I want anybody to say, hey, let's go on Pathway because of Alexander or what the Causes Pathway universe is creating for humanity to make it a better place. No. I do this because I do it myself. I just want to help people, but I also want do not want to be taken advantage for helping people because when someone takes advantage of someone, then they don't want to help anybody. And I see this a lot of the times. And these are some great people that I have came across that sometimes if one person upsets them, then it goes in a uh, domino effect. So that's that end of the, the conversation with that. But let's carry on with the... Uh, the Pathway Universe and uh, the uh, Alexander's Grand Monastery. Shall we? So here's a little forest area. It's kind of gorgeous with the water view and uh, the trees. And there's a bridge over there, so we'll cross that bridge a moment early, which is kind of interesting. I was going to use a boat to act, to show you how the the boat system works. We could add that boat feature in a, in a moment, but uh, I'm going to show you how it is just to navigate on the land.
So this will happen, and there's something about the physics engine which I'll have to to fix, which is perfectly fine. It's that uh, this becomes an invisible layer, which I have to just put um, for now a block. But it's I don't want to waste the time right now, so I'll just fly over. But it does work normally if I have it calibrated correctly. So as we go and go on this land, you could see. Okay, well, I'll be just flying to see this quicker. And this is like a little town area. I probably potentially will expand upon this in the future, but for now, keep it as it is. There's a bamboo mat. It's very traditional for the, the region. And there are 3D geometrics. So it's just not an image. It's actual 3D woven timely calculated um, you know floor mats it's very detail orientated it takes up a little space but the thing is it's perfectly fine yeah some things um, because I I move things always around I have to always uh, reconfigure certain locations of items but that's perfectly fine when I have the time I'll put it more organized okay let's look around this is a little um, shop I have over here So then this will be um, like a no card system. And then you could put messages here. And then, um, then it'll show a prompt of a message. This is another uh, interesting little town that I just uh, added a while ago. Sometimes it just takes a little moment to load. Okay, that's fine. In the past, I had like um, sake inside these little huts, these little houses. However, I've been moving it. Oh, here, here's a good example of one. With sushi. You could sit on here, this little pillow, which I have to configure again. Okay. <laughs> That's perfectly fine, but they do interact pretty well. And it's very uh, traditional. Again, it's blending in cultures, so there may be one culture that blends in another culture, but I try to keep it unique that's all one, like one whole, you know, whole creation being all, all unified. Because um, if I truly had every single, you know, perspective of everything, I would probably have over a thousand or probably million locations, which is not feasible at, at the time of filming this video, but it could be feasible in the future. So 
I need to have things, you know, still a little bit, uh, you know, together. Everything being similar together in, in the terms of culture and history. Because at one time, everything was together. So everything is now unique. So this is actually a very modern feature that we have. It's an interactive character, like I mentioned before. But uh, he stands and he moves. And the thing is, uh, someday I could maybe work on him saying, hey, how are you doing, buddy? Or something. But uh, that's kind of cool. You know, he interacts, he moves. And uh, to give an example of what this is, it's uh, they call it NPCs. It's a non-player person. Or NPC, non-player character. And uh, they're a fun addition for uh, the simulation because uh, they add a little more extra value to what's worth. And uh, it's kind of cool. So this is actually the restaurant that you might see of our earlier character dining in, having sushi and sake. So this is actually uh, one that uh, is the same building. So just to look around and this window you could see right through it it's kind of cool like in a lot of countries it looks like this where you can see through the building the window I mean okay so we go inside to the restaurant So yeah, I had to just change the physics engine and then that's okay. Takes a little time, but it's okay. Okay, let's try this. And sometimes if it doesn't work right away um, to teleport, you know, you click on the ground, it'll be a lot faster. But um, sometimes you could click on an object and sit there too. Like, to get there quicker. Okay, maybe the bar stool. I don't know what's taking this. Thank you for your patience, uh, fans. It's just sometimes little things like this, because, um, okay, maybe it works here. Okay, so when you see the chair, obviously it's going to work instantly. When the chair goes away, then it's a little problem because it doesn't register that there's a, a suitable path to sit. So here's the bar. This is kind of cool. There's a little um, like a drink, take home drink here. Uh, sushi, my ultimate favorite. Now it looks better when it's you know loaded perfectly, but it's still taking time to um, to have the the, um, the network and everything to connect in the weather and so that looks nice with uh, ginger and wasabi this is another little design and then let's sit here this is where exactly uh, my character that I took that selfie at the sushi here so when you give it about probably five minutes or 10 minutes or something like that. It'll look a lot more realistic, but for now it fits pretty well. Okay. So then we'll show the sake. Our sake. This is the, the drink, the traditional drink to have during a, a dinner time meal, sometimes lunch, depends. If it's after work or something, it depends on the, the time of day, I guess. The salad, the breadsticks. Okay. And this is some other stuff. A little take home, uh, little take home, um, Container, tea, a symbol of uh, 
the T's. Okay, let's see. It's always quicker on an empty canvas like the graphs to go because if you click on these objects, these are like um, memories, memory bank of um, assets. So it'll take longer to register the asset first and then to register um, the, the ground to teleport. So it's, it's better to just use um, a ground which has uh, a zero um, zero integer. So a lot of things is very mathematical on the development end, but on the user end, it's 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 e ease of use. So that's a great thing. So just bear in mind, and uh, we we thank you for your patience. This is a nice little bridge. So there's an actual feature called first person. So here's what it actually looks like in first person, which a lot of gamers love first person, especially those uh, traveling very fast games. So we'll show a little bit actually in first person now. Pretty gorgeous, the water and the scenery. It's it's not like um, straightforward to be a um, a click and teleport uh, system on first person rather than third person, and it's more fluid. But I could try it with you guys. No, it doesn't work. Okay, so I I'll go here. And then, so the easiest thing to do first person, rather than click on all these options above, just you want to scroll the mouse backwards all the way, slowly, and then you get to this view. And there's more decor for the cultural reference. So we will try to um, go over here to this little island that actually peninsula and to see what's around this uh, interesting tree forest with uh, a boat. Let's see. Okay, vessels. Trying to remember which one would be most suitable for here. Uh, it's been a while. Oh, actually, this is the exact one I wanted to find. Go figure that. This is like an old fashioned um, fishery boat, Fisher's, fisherman's boat. Exactly what I wanted to find. That's kind of rare. To find something that you want the first time around. Okay. So this boat, um, it's not like every other boat I have. It's um, it's more like you just click on it and you, you, you could uh, sail with it. But I have some boats that are more interactive where you could sit on different positions. This one is more old school. It usually just, you know, you you man the helm and then you just teleport to get out so or get off it. Sorry about that. I'm just trying to uh, take away this editor thing. Okay. Okay, so captain, seal the captain. Sorry about that, too. It's just the screen, uh, first person to third person. It doesn't like that ratio, so it, it goes weird angles. So thank you for, uh, you know, the patience. Okay, so to go a little faster, you just you click uh, page up, or you say uh, function on your keyboard, FN, and then up, and it should go faster. See, it's going a little faster. 
we'll go around a little bit and uh, please mind my uh, this is not really me sailing the boat it's the it's the programmable um, assets but you can you know move the cursor for the direction path but the actual physics to make the boat move in a certain pattern sometimes is could be flaky but we're working on tweak uh, tweaking it a little bit to make it a little bit more reliable and more uh, fluid but uh when when we get it going it's pretty cool and usually it's okay so this is uh pretty fast cuz normally you know these some sailing fishing boats are kind of slow and i have a uh, like a middle uh speed but kind of slower too I'm trying to remember, I think it's over here. Okay, we're almost coming to a close here. And then we'll go on that um, little uh, peninsula area that we mentioned earlier. Okay, and see how that image of the rock, uh, you know, finally loaded. So it looks blurry at first, like here, but then it looks like this once you get closer, usually, when that character. Because I set a feature where I want to save on uh, graphical performance that if my character is near a certain area, it normally will load, but he has to stay there for a certain amount of time. So here it's pretty well, you know, lit and the, the, the foliage and then the waterfall. Oh, I thought I heard this sound because the funny thing is I have it on mute on the simulation, but it, it sounded like waterfalls for some reason. Okay. So we're pretty much coming to a close right about now. Sometimes if I have the physics on a different engine, it will be crazy like this. So thank you for uh, being patient with me. And I always try to um, do uh, test pilots on my uh, physics engine to always make it a little bit more reliable than before. And as you see with the ocean, we made uh, great progress on that. But there may be some videos where I take down this um, this graphical um, feature depending on what other features I want to add but I try not to compromise on features until we're able to uh, you know gather donations so I could actually put more features and to make it more um, more uh, you know user friendly and more you know appeal for the, the curb appeal and the parents okay um it's nice uh having this time with you and uh to share future pathway universe videos with you later signing out alexander 130 of pathway universe have a great day and see you soon
Bye-bye.